All praises to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shah by Hashem Harukakadash. Double honors to our apostles and elders here at Great Millstone. So on the topic dealing with Neil Armstrong, you know, uh, this would be like number two of, you know, you thought you got away. And we know about Esau Edom, which is the so-called white man and his deception. And they have many deceptions that they have uh, cast over the whole world. And through the revealing of truth, especially in the past decade, you could say a lot of truth has been coming out. A lot of this already been revealed, but now it's just being more talked. It's, talk, it's being talked about more every day, as it should be, as it should be. And here we talk about the moon landing, right? And it should be common knowledge that obviously that whole thing was fake. It was staged. There is overwhelming evidence proven that it was all staged. It was just a Hollywood production. In fact, it was done in the desert, the Nevada desert. But yet you still see that most people are too afraid to even say that or admit it because they don't want to believe that they were deceived or they think that something's going to happen to them. Well, we're here to tell you that, according to the scriptures, uh, the truth will always prevail. And no matter what thing is done in secret or great deception is done on, whole, on the whole earth, the spirit of the Lord will reveal it as just that, a deception. And the moon landing, and you're one of America's prominent figures known as Neil Armstrong, has been proven to be a liar. And he has proven that that moon landing was all a stage. And that was one of the greatest deceptions, one of the greatest deceptions that Esau Edom, the so-called white man, has deceived the whole world with believing. But yet, the, the Lord did not allow this man to develop that technology to be able to actually succeed in his mission and thus he's been exposed as a liar all right now if you can even just google neil armstrong and tell you right here neil alden armstrong was an american astronaut and astronautical engineer who became the first person to walk on the moon in 1969 he was also a naval prof aviator test pilot and university professor so even then if you wiki him they still have this lie here this lie that's going on and it's a lie that's being taught in schools it's a lie that has even shaped uh, the curriculum in schools. If you go to learn about math or physics, you part of your curriculum is that you're going to have to learn about the evidence that was provided by the so-called astronauts that went to the moon as far as uh, how things are on the moon and how fast they land. Because they'll say, oh, they dropped a pin and the pin dropped at this speed of rate. So now part of your whole test or your part of your curriculum to pass the class is you got to answer and learn about things you know how fast would this drop on the earth versus how fast would drop on the moon when in, when in reality that information is fake the information is false right and the lord decided okay through his power and through his prophecy at the moment that this uh, event was staged was the moment that America started to decline severely as is written in the scriptures right, first I'm going to read this is uh, Sirach chapter 23 because the point is you can't escape alright you thought you got away alright this is Sirach 28 I'm sorry 23 verse 18 a man that breaketh wedlock saying dust in his heart who seeth me? I am compassed about with darkness. The walls cover me, and nobody seeth me. What need I to fear? The Most High will not remember my sins. And I'm always going to open up with this verse. Because this showing that a man breaking the wedlock is basically a man that's committing adultery, either physically or spiritually. He broke the law. He did something evil. And in his heart, he says, who seeth me? Nobody saw what I did. I'm the only one here. Nobody knows. The most high won't remember this. What do I have to fear? I have the protection of the darkness around me. The, the walls around me. I'm going to get away with this. 
Verse 19, such a man only feareth the eyes of men, and knoweth not that the eyes of the Lord are ten thousand times brighter than the sun, beholding all the ways of men, and considering the most secret parts. Yes, the most secret parts. So, whatever a man does, if it's evil, man or woman or whatever, if it's a plan or whatever the case is, it's the Lord's will if he chooses to reveal it or not. Because there's always a space of repentance given to a man. But if that repentance is, if, if, if you're not, if you did not uh, perform or say Salakia, it is, it is the most high's will that if he wants to, it can be revealed. And in the case of Esau Edom, which is an enemy to the Lord, the Lord has allowed this devil to deceive the world for many of hundreds of years. But now his deception is being revealed. Uh, and his plays are being called out before he even makes it or when he makes it. The deception is there. The de like the deception is being uh, is being broken down, and now everything is coming to light. Man. This is Obadiah. The vision of Obadiah thus said the Lord Yahweh concerning Edom. We have heard a rumor from the Lord, an ambassador is sent among the heathen. Arise ye, let us rise up against her in battle so the Lord is at war with Esau Edom especially when his deception on the whole earth dealing with Christianity and Jesus Christ the so-called being a so-called white image and using that image to force us into slavery and now the effects of that same um, indoctrination is still with us today that's why our people are in what we call plantation Christianity and they still hold fast to a man who they look at as a white Jesus, which is clearly false. But this is how they conquered the whole world, right? But now we have the truth. Now it's all being exposed. And as the exposure is being made manifest, what's happening to this society is being broken down. Because the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. But breaking down strongholds and establishments, especially those based upon lies. That's why the society is upside down, because it's established upon lies. So all the Heavenly Father did was bless us, his servants, with the Holy Spirit to reveal the truth and look at what's going on in society. Everything is coming upside down thanks to the truth. Even now, this video will be censored. It'll either be taken down or blacklisted. Why? Because it's a deception that must maintain itself in the earth. Because, like I said, it's even reaching to curriculums in schools. People wrote books about it. And it's a complete big fat lie. And I'm going to play a video in the end. So you see how it must maintain itself. So what must be silenced? The truth. Those who speak the truth. Because that which is done in secret is just supposed to remain that. It's supposed to remain a secret. But the Heavenly Father revealed the secret. Verse 3. It says, The pride of thine heart have deceived thee, thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock, whose habitation is high, that saith in his heart, who shall bring me down to the ground? Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, and though thou set thy nest among the stars, thence will I bring thee down, saith the Lord Yahweh. So the moment you set your nest among the stars, and you started putting satellites in the earth's atmosphere, and you so-called staged the moon landing, the moment you told the entire world to put fear in them, that your nest is among the stars, that's when the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, why Yahweh Shah started to bring you down. In 1969 was the deception made on the whole earth that uh, Neil Armstrong, as well as his crew, went and landed on the moon. During that same time, was around the same time that World War II ended with Nero, Nero, Hiroshima and Nagasaki, those atomic bombs were landed. At that time, America was one of the only nations with that nuclear capability. But because of that time, that's when the Lord, that's when the uh, the Lord put the spirit on the other nations and gave them the same knowledge to also enhance their defense systems and weapon systems. Now everybody in the room has a gun, so to speak. Everybody has a nuclear capability. So now you are no longer the big bad bully. Everybody now around you, your your enemies and your allies. Are capable of also uh, emitting such destruction 
right, with the same technology. This was all around the same time you faked the moon landing. So at this point in time, that's when your dominance went, was, that's when the Lord started to bring down your dominance because you set your nest among the stars till you've been brought low. This is Luke chapter 12, verse 2. For there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, neither hid that shall not be known. So best believe when you cause such a great deception on the whole earth to, to trick the world into believing that you are this God, that you are God. Best believe you, how Yahusha is going to deal with that and he's going to reveal the truth because that's all he has to do. That landing was a Hollywood production. It was planning. It was it was microphones. It was cameras. It was lights. It was green screen. It was video editing. It was uh, a, a lot a lot of people specialized in this, the lighting, that all that great deception to try to push that deception that you landed on the moon. It was it was heavy. Okay, it was a lot of work put into it, and all it takes is for the truth to dismantle all of it. That's all it takes. And now, here we are in so-called year 2022, alleged, that's what we believe, right? Now they're asking for more years to uh, do something that they've done, allegedly, with ease back in 1969. And it wasn't just one time. They apparently went six times. In the span of like three years. And you know why they lied? Because they believed that eventually they would be able to come up with that technology. But the Heavenly Father did not grant them that technology. He didn't grant them with that knowledge. You want to know why? Because that blessing is reserved for us. This is Job 14 and 5. Seeing his days are determined, talking about the wicked, the number of his months are with thee. Thou hast appointed his bounds that he cannot pass. And the Lord did not give you the, uh, he put you in the bound of just that, satellites and nuclear missiles. He did not give you that blessing, the knowledge to send a human being past the earth's radiation belts. The world called, they call him Van Allen Belts after Edomite because he so-called discovered it. But it's the Earth's radiation belts. You are bound. You cannot pass it. But you believe that, that oh yeah, don't worry. Real soon we can, we'll, we'll find the technology to get a human past it. Year after year after year, we're getting close. More lies. Keep lying to the people. Keep lying to this. Keep lying to that. Because questions were being asked. Keep lying. So much that. Eventually, he died, and they still couldn't come up with that knowledge. So imagine how many lives he had to give. Because I don't know how old was. Let's see how old was he. All right, so from 1930 to 2012, that's 70, 80. He died at 82, and he was 38 years old, allegedly, in 1969. So 38, which is down there, 40. So over half his life. Over half his life, he had to tell lies. He had to tell lies because they believed they would eventually obtain that knowledge to be able to do that. And the Heavenly Father did not allow you to. So you sealed your fate the moment you staged that. Okay. You sealed your fate. This is a uh, Sirach 16 to 17, just more to the point. Say not thou, I will hide myself from the Lord. Shall any remember me from above? I shall not be remembered among so many people. For what is my soul among such an infinite number of creatures? Verse 18. Behold, the heaven and the heavens of heavens, the deep and the earth, and all therein is, shall be moved when he visit. Okay. The mountains also and the foundation of the earth shall be shaken with trembling when the Lord looketh upon them. No man heart can think upon these things worthily and who is able to conceive his ways so man's wisdom or man's knowledge believe has you to believe that that which you've done the evil you've done or the deception you've, as long as you trick the people and nobody else sees it that the lord won't see it indeed the lord does see it 
And like I said, there's always a, a window of repentance given and for man so that it doesn't have to be made man, manifest. But for that one to think that he got away, it's the will of the Lord. If he chooses to, it can be made open. It can be made manifest. But nothing done in dark is not seen from the Lord. All It at all seen. Okay. Many thugs and rappers and all them make these songs and they think like I did all this evil to get here and I got all this money and nobody knows. But then you wonder why Stray Bullet catches them when they get killed or robbed and killed. It's because they thought they got away from some evil and the Lord decided to judge them for it. And then if the Lord wanted to, he could bring the evidence out proving to you what type of person this guy actually was. Nothing escapes. Okay. And I, I, I like, um, I just like the idea of the Lord revealing uh, primarily you say these devils but in general you, you have people who do evil things and then they thought they escaped they thought I got away and then it's the will of the Heavenly Father whether it's immediately swiftly years later or even decades later he could choose to reveal that knowledge I love it because it shows you that there's nothing secret done secret before the Lord no evil no great deception is done before the Lord and is not seen Yet man believes that they can trick the Lord. You can't trick the Lord. This is Daniel 2. Then I'm going to let the video play. This is Daniel 2, verse 46. Then King Nebuchadnezzar fell upon his face and worshipped Daniel and commanded that they should offer an oblation and sweet odors unto him. The king answered unto Daniel and said, Of a truth it is that your God is the God of gods and the Lord of kings. And a revealer of secrets, saying thou couldst reveal this secret. People have been bamboozled into believing that landing on the moon six times in the span of three years is entirely possible. They also think it's reasonable that we haven't even thought of going back in over 45 years. And the fact that NASA has repeatedly admitted that we can't go past low Earth orbit. This next generation spacecraft will enable America to explore beyond low Earth orbit. Now, we only can fly in Earth orbit. That's the farthest that we can go. The kinds of technologies that we're testing out on space station are definitely helping us with our goals of going beyond low Earth orbit. Early in the next decade, a set of crewed flights will test and prove the systems required for exploration beyond low Earth orbit. Uh, by the way, there's a small problem with going to the moon, and inch by inch, NASA is leaking out that they know that there's a problem there. It's called the Van Allen belts, high radiation belts of charged particles around Earth, and we don't know how to get through them, they say. Well, isn't that interesting, because there sure didn't seem to be a problem back in 1969. How do we get through the Van Allen belts? They have all their top scientists working on it. It's a tremendous problem because we do not have any kind of a spacecraft that we can send up that doesn't have metal in it. And when these charged particles hit metal, they produce x-rays. Nothing you can do to get around that. So anybody sitting around something metal in outer space in the Van Allen belts is going to be French fried. And so that whole thing was a giant hoax. And you have second and third tier scientists in the United States who are running around saying, oh, yes, we did, yes, we did. But the very top level people, what I call the tier one scientists, the black op mill scientists, know for a fact we didn't go. And it's a real problem. They don't know how to get through there. Then they presented what they had done to us. Can't explain that. Um, that, that escapes me. <laughs> Why? So, um, maybe you'll have to try and answer and ask it. These very photographs are the same ones circulated year after year on anniversary commemorations. 
It is estimated that in just the first 60 minutes on the moon, motivated by the tenuous nature of the circumstances, many more exposures could have been expediently taken. Also surprising is the scarcity of photographs of the mission's chief pioneer, Neil Armstrong, the greatest achievement in human history and of the man whose first step echoed around the world, dawning a new age of scientific enlightenment. There is only one full body picture of him on the moon besides this ghostly reflection. This one, taken by an automatic camera mounted on the side of the lunar module. Perhaps he feared liability, should the whole conundrum later become unraveled. Perhaps he has forgotten that he attested to the authenticity of the event with his signature on this plaque engraved by the federal government. In fact, in the more than 30 years since the event, aside from NASA's initial press conference and the occasional brief anniversary remarks where few questions were permitted, he has never given one on-camera interview to anyone because he doesn't want to lie anymore. Someone apparently forgot to create a burn crater underneath the lunar module's 10,000 pound thrust engine, despite the fact that during ground tests, there was a real concern for the vehicle falling into the hole the engine created as it descended. Here is a depiction based on the latest specifications and scientific data. In these enlargements, it looks as though the lunar module was simply placed there, not even one speck of moon dust on the landing pod. As a result, all subsequent flights had to have the same discrepancy, which was explained away by the effect of no atmosphere. And what about stars? On the moon, with no atmosphere, they must have been quite a sight to behold. Yet there is seldom any mention of them, if ever, by any of the astronauts on any of the missions. Undoubtedly, creating a mural with all the constellations properly placed in the sky would have been virtually impossible to create accurately, much less realistically. A competent amateur astronomer would have been able to call attention to the slightest error in measurement. The answer? Not to talk about the stars. Ever. In their post-flight press conference, it was the only question to which Neil Armstrong responded with an absence of memory. When you looked up at the sky, could you actually see the stars and the solar corona in spite of the glare? We were never able to see stars from the lunar surface or on the daylight side of the moon by eye without looking through the optics. Uh, I don't recall during the period of time that we were photographing the solar corona what, or what stars we could see. I don't remember seeing any. Years later, though, Michael Collins would remember seeing the elusive stars and wrote about them in Expeditions to the Moon. It seems his memory improved the older he got. Why don't stars appear in any of the photographs? Simply because the proper, mostly closed exposure setting for the camera's iris set that way to compensate for the bright sunlight on the moon's surface completely diminished the faintness of relatively distant specks of diminutive light. This answer is true. It does not, however, explain why they never took any pictures of the stars by themselves, with an exposure setting perfect for them. While they took three automobiles to the moon... Mr. Sir, well, knowing you, that's probably a thing. Right, but... You didn't walk on the moon. That's, that's fine. fine. That's fine. It's okay if you know it. Do you understand? <laughs> you can have any opinion you want. That's what's wonderful about this country. You can believe anything you want. And it's okay with me, for sure. Right. Mr. Armstrong, Bart Sigwell, ABC Digital. I wanted to give you the opportunity to swear in the Bible that you walked on the moon. Will you put your left hand on the Bible and swear to God that you walked on the moon? Gentlemen. Mr. Sarko. Yes? <clears throat> if you really walked on the moon, why would you not do that? So why don't you just put the end to the record in the argument and put your hand on the Bible, swear to God you walked on the moon. Mr. Sir, well, knowing you, that's probably a thing. All right, well. Jelly? Well, no, it's a real Bible. You have the opportunity to have $5,000. The meeting is not open. Well, you have $5,000 cash. You can give it to charity if you swear on the Bible that you walked on the moon. Please I have a tape. It'd be fine. Why don't you I swear to... Why not? Why won't you do it? So why don't you put your hand on the Bible and swear to God that you walked yeah, on the moon. Stop worshipping me! I'm just a big fake! Like, like the moon landing! Well, we're right. Once noted, 
that the only bird that could talk was the parrot. And he didn't fly very well. Turn this place into a karaoke bar. Oh man, that's the best idea since they faked the movie. So you get the point. With that, I uh, hope it was edifying. I'll pray to see how about Shimmy Abishai, how about Shimmy Crocodile. If I didn't say it, that boy on his tar possum, that was a great milestone. Shout out.